Hello, welcome back. In today's video, how to paint your second sign. Here with Snazzy Paint with Max Kilborn. Well, hopefully you got your first sign done. Feeling pretty good about yourself? All puffed up, getting ready for that second one. Here it is, let's paint this second sign. You know, I've said it a hundred times with people I'm teaching stuff to and they get something done like that, I say, okay, great. Now just do one more thousand of those and you'll be styling. <laughs> you know what? I'm always thinking about these videos. What can I say to be helpful for people that are starting out? How can I make a difference with what they're doing? And one of the things that I realize, and even in myself, when I'm talking to people that are basically new or newish to the whole concept is it's kind of lonesome. I always feel alone in the amount of stuff that I know. It's why I watch videos. And I want to be able to be helpful in getting people through that stuff. A lot of times you're stuck with your own thoughts. You're doing your creative process. You're trying to execute those ideas. And believe me, I've executed some great ideas. And of course, you have to deal with your own thoughts. Well. Let's get through that. Let's get our second sign done. First things first, obviously, is we're going to coat this board. And one of my subscribers, a guy that wrote into me, said, how do you get the fade on that sign? So I'm going to show you how I do that. I start off with a nice, solid coat of paint. I let that set up for about 10 minutes, and then I put on another coat. I don't really need two coats, but yeah, I just feel better about it. This is where it gets a little tricky. I try to lay down just enough paint in just the right spots to create a fade. See, I'm an airbrush artist. I'm accustomed to really soft, pretty fades. So this is kind of clumpy for me, but it, I know that on a sign like this, it's still gonna look really good because even though it's a little choppy, having the letters over the top of this kind of hide all the problems and it still looks really good as a fade for a background. Put a coat of clear over the whole thing so it's not bumpy. It's ready to go. When I laid this sign out, I just, I laid it out by hand. I just wanted this to be fast and dirty. Just bang out some letters. I don't know how much experience you have with laying stuff out, but if you've done at least your first sign, then you already have some experience. You already have a really good idea how to handle this. Me, I'm just gonna bang it out. And I'm doing that because I'm trying to make a point. Simple, banger out a sign that we can also make some money on, hopefully. You, of course, will lay it out as clean or as nice as you want. You could say anything you want on this sign. I laid this out by hand. Basically, I'm just faking it. If you don't have a lot of experience with laying signs out, listen carefully. Copy anything. When I was starting out as a tattoo guy, I was trying to learn the style of drawing that you need to do to be good at it. I wanted to be different, wanted to show off. And you know what? I just was having a tough time. And the gentleman that was teaching me how to, he said, Copy anything. Just don't copy anything that's bad. It's okay to copy stuff. That's what learning is. You go into a classroom or you learn from somebody, you do stuff like they do, you take that information and you apply it yourself. It's a learning process. Okay, first things first, the idea. What I did is I knew I wanted to paint a sign that I could show off with and sell and make some money with. And I wanted it to be something completely foreign to me. So what I did was I imagined this concept. You pick a shop in town or a place that you can go to, a cobbler, a mechanic, a body shop, which I picked, or a coffee shop, perfect. And what you do is you paint a sign that would be ideal for them and, well, two things going on here. You get practice doing your sign painting stuff, 
and you get a little practice selling something and getting, getting your stuff out there. So what I did was I went online and I looked up a mechanic. I, I, I typed in cool signs for a mechanic, cool signs for a tattoo shop. Anyway, I landed on this one thing that I really liked and it's for a body shop. So I'm going to paint that today and have you follow along. And in doing all of this sign, uh, if you go to sell it, eh, worst, worst case scenario, eh, you got to keep the thing, you hang it up and you, that's one of your examples for your work. Best case scenario, you take a bunch of pictures of it, you like document it, you write down how much you got paid for it, you sell it, you make some money, baby. And that money goes toward new brushes, new paint. Keep you rolling, keep you excited. And plus, when you sell something, it just feels good. You feel like somebody appreciates your stuff. The font that I used on those top two lines, it's a standard in the sign industry. Quick, one stroke, get the information on there, simple letters. These will be the basically the first font the first letters in your vocabulary as a sign painter. You need to do these all the time. I went online and I typed in cool sign painting fonts. And if you go to images, it just shows up with these like whole alphabets and it's stuff you can copy stuff that you can use for creating fonts for yourself and your own signs. I love this stuff. These, these quick one stroke things that sign painters do are awesome. No, I'm not a writer. Okay. After I painted these letters, I kind of stood back from the sign and realized it was too dark. So I'm going to throw some white over top of it and save it. Fixing mistakes as you go is, yeah, it's just a part of sign painting. It happens all the time. Uh, 
And with this part, the whole thing looked a little boring, so I just added some highlights to these letters. I always sign and date my stuff. Everybody just signs it, nobody puts a date. Well, I go up to old stuff that I've painted and I wish I had known what year that was that I did it. Kind of tells me where I was at the time. I think new sign painters should sign and date their stuff. Well, actually to see how much better you get over time. And it's, to me, it's really, really important. I think it should be important to everybody. As a matter of fact, I've looked at some other signs that I've seen that I went, oh, this is really great stuff. I wonder how old that sign is. I wish there was a date on it. Here's one of those ideas I was talking about that I'm about to execute. I thought this sign would look good if it had its own dent. I think this is gonna look cool. I don't know. I might be destroying this thing, but I think this will be funny and I think it'll work. Here we go. It's not denting very bad. I gotta give it a whack, I guess. Oh no! That should be enough to make a point. When I was reading my comments, somebody asked me, how do you hang your signs? Well, here's how. I got some JB Weld. To, and I used to use Gorilla Glue, but a couple of my signs fell off the wall and made me really upset. I'm really happy with this JB Weld. And I got some of these D-ring uh, things. I'm gonna JB Weld that right to there. I'm gonna put another one here and run a wire. And there it is, pow, bang, shablingo. You got it. You just finished your second sign. Of course, do uh, 998 more and you'll be styling. This is awesome. You may not want to put a dent in yours. It's a little weird now that I'm looking at it, but I still like it a whole lot. Uh, I'm gonna take this to a body shop and try to sell it. I'll make a video out of it. I'll let you know what happens. I'm going to ask a hundred bucks for it to cover the cost of paint and metal and stuff. And then uh, it'll cover the cost of this and it'll cover the cost of the next one that I want to paint. So I'm not so much out of pocket every time I want to practice and do something cool. Don't forget, subscribe, uh, like the page if it was any help. Stay tuned. I got a bunch more stuff coming out. And don't forget. Paint your ass off.